product specialist here at SideFX Software. We're going to be talking about some of the new features in Houdini 16, mostly related directly to games because we have a lot of features for large scale film, visual effects stuff. Um, and I'm sure you guys would love to take like 400 million particles and run it in real time in your game engine, but it's probably not going to happen. So uh, we're going to focus more on the viewport and some new modeling tools that I think are pretty exciting. But before we begin, I'm going to show our demo reel so you can see what some of our customers uh, are doing already using Houdini for games. One of our goals was to um, make the workflow a little smoother for people who are coming from other applications, people who are used to working in the viewport uh, and doing things sort of directly. So one of our first, uh, the first things that we tackled was, here's just a, a bunch of random materials rendered on spheres uh, using Mentor, which is our physically based renderer in Houdini. Um, and of course, PBR textures, PBR shading is sort of all over the games industry now. So we wanted to make sure our viewport matched this as much as possible so that when you're moving between rendering and real-time engine, everything sort of matches. So here's a viewport render of the exact same uh, materials that were just shown uh, on the Mantra render. So you can see that obviously there's some changes in the shading, but we support displacements in the viewport, normal mapping, everything that you would sort of expect um, in a real-time Another thing we wanted to do is let you get access to some of the tools in Houdini uh, directly in the viewport. So a lot of times, you know, we have these nodes that you see on the uh, the left side of the, or the right side of the screen there, um, and people are not always comfortable with that because it's a different way of working. So we added these uh, options that we call radial menus to give you access to a lot of the viewport um, options that you would need, like changing views, selecting uh, different types of selection tools changing your shading and so on, using these things that we call radio menus. Um, but also that yeah, you have access to actual nodes, so you can drop down nodes using these tools as well, like for instance doing a, a poly extrude or something like that. Um, the other thing is that underlying these radio menus that you see here is basically Python. And so Python runs these uh, commands, and that means that it's a completely customizable piece of UI. So we have a graphics user interface to do that as well, a drag and drop, so you can just drop tools on there. Um, but we also have access through Python to write any script that you like. So that's not just dropping nodes or selecting menu options. It actually can just run any Python script that you want to write, which means that in a pipeline scenario, it can be extremely useful to have quick access to these kinds of tools. Um, the other thing that we did was added something that we call um, with, uh, desktops. And so we can tie things like the radio menu that you're using. So in this case, here, I'm just going to switch to, let's say, UV tools. Like, um, but we can also tie it to what we call a desktop. So if I switch now from our current desktop to the modeling desktop, you'll see the radio menu changes now to give you access to those tools. So it's just a nice way of like organizing your tools, giving you fast access, letting you work with them uh, really quickly in a more sort of user-friendly way directly in the viewport if you're coming from a package where that's more how you would work. And here we've just jumped over to our look development um, 
desktop so that you can do render, for instance. Um, but we also done a lot of updates to some of our modeling tools to really help, um, again, uh, help users who are more used to an interactive workflow without lo losing the sort of procedural backbone. So here's an idea where we have this uh, mesh that has a hole in it. We're going to use the new uh, option called polyfill, and it literally will just fill in the hole with quads. So in this case, I'm just randomly deleting holes in this mesh and then filling them in with quads using polyfill. Um, but polyfill can do things like cap the cylinder in a variety of ways. So here's triangles, triangle fan, um, quad fan, grid. Um, we can also do offsets to create uh, edge loops on the edges of these holes. And here's a really interesting case where we have a sphere with a hole in it, right? So we need a way of sort of estimating the curvature of this object so that we can match the new geometry to the old geometry. So you can imagine this being really useful in a workflow, especially as this becomes more popular in games, where you're using scan data and you need to like fill in all the holes, clean up the mesh, and so on. So all this, of course, in the background is completely procedural. So you can use this uh, polyfill to fill in all the holes in your mesh uh, procedurally, you know, without having to go and select edges and so on. And so this is what I mean when I'm talking about bridging the gap between sort of user interaction, where you can select something and uh, do a command, uh, versus a procedural approach, which will always be sort of the heart of the game. Um, here's another very simple update to a tool that we think, um, uh, I can get this video. Let's try this again. Hey there. Um, which is just an update to our poly split tool. So imagine um, doing an edge loop in a, as a modeler, right? Extremely common modeling operation. And what happens when you do that typically is that you basically interpolate the loop around your geometry. So you can see as I move to one side, it kind of matches that side, and then it blends and interpolates to the other side, right? So a very useful tool we've added is this idea of a, of a profile match. And so now you can see that it matches the right side of the wing and not the left side. So you can create parallel edge loops to that piece of geometry. But you can also switch the profile. Now, so we're gonna match this V sort of shape on the left side. And so I can do that all the way across the wing. And so now when you're modeling these organic -y, uh, kind of shapes, you can still have nice, consistent parallel edge loops or do something like this and create them all at once. And then just as an example, we'll just do a couple of other modeling operations real quickly. Again, just to show you how, how much effort we're putting into working in the viewport directly, um, while still using all the same procedural tools you can get access to um, in the uh, network. So here's just a quick, you know, poly extrude, poly bevel, again, all just working in the viewport. However, the, the sort of, um, you know, 900 pound gorilla in the room with Houdini uh, 16 is our new uh, Boolean tool. So Booleans have been around for a long time. People use them in all kinds of ways. Um, but again, because we have this procedural backbone, we had to make sure it was extremely precise and extremely accurate because proceduralism works on a sort of a basic concept of consistency, right? Like, if I do this, this will be the result every time I do that, right? So we needed a Boolean operation that was as consistent as that. So here's just the most basic Boolean operations. We're taking this sort of rubber toy and this pig head and we're Boolean, Booleaning them together. Um, a nice thing to point out is that all vertex attributes are maintained through this process, so material assignments, UVs, all that stuff comes across. Uh, and that's very useful when you're thinking of like combining multiple objects together that already have UVs. And so we've also, because again, Houdini is very well known in the visual effects world, we're actually taking this to be something of a tool for um, destruction as well. Right? So here's a tool that we call Shatter which basically is just using these grids as a cutting object to cut up the pig. And, and again, you'll see the, uh, the UVs coming across. So imagine uh, something made out of wood and you want to cut it into slices. What you can have is your cutting object to have a wood grain texture on it. And then when, once you've done your cutting, now you've actually sort of textured the inside of your object and the outside simultaneously. And again, a lot of this is possible because of how consistent and uh, accurate our Boolean operation actually is. So here's like a, a horrible example for a Boolean, right? We're just taking all of these boxes and we're animating them together and we're doing a Boolean a union on all of the boxes. And on the right, we just cut the top off so you can see what's happening sort of 